Welcome back. If you notice, I am simply joyful today, and that is because we are here to discuss orange cats and orange cat behavior. But forgive me, I, I just want to go into a little backstory here. I had a little ginger moggy when I was growing up, and I was just a little boy, and his name was Goblet. And he and I were just thick as thieves, and we would sleep together and play together, and he was the smartest cat. He was one step away from algebra. In fact, I would hazard a guess to say he was my first teacher. Okay, anyway, goblet. Today, we are going to be talking about orange cat behavior. What is orange cat behavior? Let us consult the Cat Daddy Dictionary. <laughs> I, yeah. Opaque cat, oblong cat behavior. Orange cat behavior. Orange cat behavior. It's blank. <laughs> this is a first, you know, there's always, maybe because they're so inexplicable. It is blank, what am I going to do? Uh, I, I don't know, I'm struggling here. Um, Google it. What is Googler? Googler? What, what do I do? Just type it in. Oh. Okay then. <clears throat> Orange cat behavior. Nothing. What? Oh, Googler. Oh. I was like, let's try out this orange cat thing. Like, let's see what this is all about. He'll run laps at full speed around the house and just run into the wall head first. Like, be for real. This can't, this can't be normal. Oh. What is orange cat behavior? What is wrong with the world? Urban Dictionary, I don't know what the Urban Dictionary says, pardon my French, <laughs> only orange cats do because they are literally an insane breed. You set me up. One orange brain cell, what is meme? Meme. Meme. What is this meme? You're the only one standing between you and freedom. All you have to do is push it open. All right. All orange cats share one single brain cell. I, I need to breathe. So in the name of all things orange holy and goblet, I now abdicate my throne. Take it away. You got to feel for Nigel. I mean, I feel for Nigel. But, and while he decompresses and cries about Goblet, I got to say, I'm right there with him, man. I had no idea this was a thing. I guess I must be alone because the entire social media sphere is alight with orange cat behavior. I mean, whether it's the one orange brain cell subreddit with over 390,000 people on it, all dedicated to the world that believes that all orange cats share one orange brain cell, and whether it's the story of Jorts the cat, a very famous uh, office cat, famous for being dumb, I guess, locking himself in closets, and being compared to the other office cat, Gene, who is a torty. Interesting. That leads me to my next point, stereotypes. How did the orange cat get stereotyped? And where do stereotypes come from? And so in the interest of us over here at Team Cat Mojo feeling like we're scientists, we put up a poll in our social medias, Instagram and YouTube, and asked you to describe orange cats in one or apparently two words, and over 20,000 of you responded. And overwhelmingly, the winner at 42% was friendly slash social, orange cat. Coming in second at 36% funny slash derpy or you know dumb and then way back in the pack we had feisty and fearless but all of these words are the words that you think about when we're talking about that orange cat behavior meme the single brain cell the shared brain cell the jorts it's right here stereotype or fact hmm 
Now, another thing that I think plays into the fact that the orange cat is so ripe for stereotypes, in the same way there's rampant stereotypes of the tortie. And if you haven't watched this video about tortitude, maybe you want to watch that. But the reason why I think the stereotype can flourish is that we have torties, 99.79 something percent are female, and orange cats, over 80% are male. Think about it. The tortitude, we're talking spicy and particular. And, okay, I'm not gonna go any further than that. And with the orange cat, we have dumb and friendly. You got male and female right there in terms of stereotypes, you know? <coughs> Projection. That gender in the back of our co collective unconscious informs the orange cat behavior. Who would have thought? Well, apparently I did. You know, one of the stories about Jorts is that he climbed up on a computer and went, oh, Jackson Galaxy, subscribe. And then he just did a little comment about, like, please tell the world I'm not stupid, that Gene is. Anyway, you should subscribe. You should maybe give us a little thumbs up. And don't forget, interact with this community. If you haven't checked out the comments in all of these videos, what an amazing community you guys are. Be a part of it. Dropping science like Galileo dropped the orange. I mean, in terms of scientific empirical data, there isn't much that points to orange cats being a certain type type of personality, the closest that, that we got is a 1995 study showed that orange cats are less common in areas with a higher mortality rate, which it can be concluded is because they engage in riskier behavior. Orange males are significantly larger than non-orange males. So then you think that would, might explain their forward nature and maybe a little bit more aggressive and feisty behavior. Then you've got the fact that they are more common in rural areas than urban areas. In fact, they are less likely to be seen in areas with higher mortality rates, which would be cities. And that's because the last point, they engage in riskier behavior. So that could be fighting with other males, and that could be uh, jumping from place to place because they are, you know, that kind of friendly, maybe a little dumb, not thinking about the risks, and feisty. You see how all these words play into those facts? But folks, that's as far as we get when it comes to science supporting any of the stereotypes. But you know what? It's enough. It works. Even if it's a little bitty orange thread, it works. Science. Good job, boy. And speaking of that orange thread, now we get into the stereotypes that I've brought into over time, and that is the stereotype of the orange cat male as being like Dennis the Menace. This is all your fault. This is all your fault. Running around town with a slingshot in his pocket, trying to see what kind of a cool sound it would make if you hit, you know, Mr. Wilson in the back of the head with a rock and then ran away. That's orange cats to me. That's the experience that I've had over time. For the most part, that plays into that study in a way. And now we're creating this huge little cluster of stereotype and science, or science that we think supports this, into jorts. But wherever there's a stereotype, there is a hole in a theory. And whenever I think of Dennis the Menace, the next thing I think about are the cats, orange cats, that my wife Minu and I have shared our lives with in a very big way. I mean, the first one is Barry, who was a big presence, but in a completely different way. Not in a jortsy way. He was like soulful. He was like a, a Zen Buddhist. And we've caught him, you know, with a cricket in the corner making friends with the cricket. Like he had no idea how to hunt or no, no, not in a dumb way, in an optimistic way. That's who Barry was. And what a lovely boy. Barry. Barry. And his sister, that both were, were uh, bottle babies that, that Minu brought up, uh, was also orange. Her name was Lily. Was she this, you know, gregarious? No, she was a little fearful at first. She, she would come out of her shell, but I'm telling you, man, that she had nothing to do with that stereotype. And then there's Gabby, Lily and Barry's mom, who after 
she was trapped because she was very, very feral, eventually found her way into our house as well, eventually became very much a house cat, and was very much the tortiest orange cat that you ever did meet, and, and loud, and none of these guys fell into the stereotype. So just if I had to say it, I'm gonna say it, because I'm sure there's a thousand and fifty of you guys out there going, my orange cat is nothing like Dennis the Menace or Jorts. He's not dumb. He doesn't have one brain cell that he shares with a million other orange cats. That's not my cat. I'm just saying, me too. I fell into the stereotype. I dug myself out of the stereotype hole. <laughs> and there we are, orange cat behavior. So at the end of this, you know, gently loving, stereotypical, science-based orange fluff ball, uh, what do we have? You know, one of the things that I think, you know, in the midst of all this fun, and it really is, uh, even though me and Nigel both were initially greatly offended by the orange cat behavior meme life, is that no matter what it is, there's always the individual. So the one thing I want you to remember is if you, you know, heard the polls and you were like, oh, funny and feisty and derpy and friendly and I want an orange cat. Individuals, my friends, individuals, nature, nurture, life experiences, feelings, interactions, all create an individual. So, you know, maybe you don't want to just focus on an orange cat. What you want to do, without focusing on color or, you know, what certain breeds do. Oh, I want to get me a Bengal because they'll act all wild, or I want to get me an Abyssinian because she'll act like a spider monkey. Why don't you just go to a shelter or a rescue or get on Pet Finder or something like that, and you will just connect. Something's going to happen. They will pick you when you walk by them. You will sit in a chair and somebody will hop in your lap. That's the cue you want to take, not the color or the derpiness or the jorts of it all. Um, like I said, it's, it's fun, but at the end of the day, just make a connection with a cat and rescue a cat, save a cat, because cats need saving. So go to your local shelter or rescue, get online and get yourself a cat or <clears throat> two. All right, everybody. Until next time, uh, I'm going to go comfort poor Nigel who's still sobbing over there. And you take care of each other, your orange cats, your torty cats, your cats, your dogs, everybody. And I'll see you next time. All light, all love, all mojo. Meow.